welcome to WTMK Live, your holistic health and unconventional foodie destination. And today we have a super, super special show. I have my great friend Liz Curran here. She's with Anxiety. Liz Curran Health and Anxiety Coaching. <laughs> I'm sorry. <That's> okay. <laughs> and she's going to walk us through and give us the recipe for how to make kombucha. So get ready. We're going to have some great fun. Take it away, Liz. Hi, everybody. Thank you to everybody from Healthy Happy Living with Coach Colette's page and my page. Um, today, we are going to learn how to make kombucha. So what is kombucha? Kombucha is a fermented tea, basically. Um, and it's something that you would drink to aid with digestion and to um, boost your immune system. Um, not necessarily to replace any conventional means, but to complement maybe like how you would take airborne if you were going on an airplane ride. Um, you could take kombucha like you would take a vitamin C when you're starting to get a cold or if you have a little bit of a, a bellyache. Oh yeah, so it's an amino boost and it is a fermented tea. So it's uh, fermented foods as, as we know are always good for aiding digestion and boost liver function. So all kinds of good things that you can find about kombucha. And so first I'm going to have you dial the camera down a little bit and take a look at my mad science project here. So this is my kombucha jug. Oh, it's and a this, little bit late. This one has been... It's okay. Can you see okay in there? Because yeah. I can't... Yeah, we're good. We're running behind a little bit here. <laughs> okay. So this is my tea that has already been brewed. So what you see here is tea that has been fermenting for about three weeks. And... This, well, you know, we'll get to this in a little bit. I'm going to, I'm just, first I'm going to show you how to make it. But this is what it looks like in the end. You're going to see this nice, juicy scoby here, which is, looks like a jellyfish. We'll show you more, talk more, a little bit about that in a little bit. So we're going to put this one aside. And we're going to make some. So before we got, so this is an empty jug. And what you're going to want to do is start with a nice couple of gallon big jug that you have. It's nice to have them with a little spout. Um, it should be glass, not plastic, and not metal. You do not want the metal to touch the fluid that has the SCOBY in it. And this is plastic. This part is okay. You just want to have the, the base be glass and not to use metal utensils when working with the product. And you'll see that my utensils have a rubber tip. So the metal is not actually touching the SCOBY. So first you start out, you can buy something like this at a, you know, a store like Bed Bath & Beyond or Target. Yeah, Maybe. I think I got that one at um, the Christmas tree shop. Oh, it was perfect. like 13 bucks. Yeah, so not, great. not much at all. And yeah. This one probably holds a gallon. A gallon and a half. Yeah, a gallon and a half of water. So you want to first what do take some white vinegar. And you don't want to use soap or anything. I just take white vinegar and even a paper towel, and I just wipe the inside of it out. And then you can consider it clean. Um, some recipes even call for vinegar in the kombucha recipe, so you don't have to worry about any of that cross-contamination. So to start... The first step is you're going to boil some tea water. And we pre-made this beforehand so that we made sure we could be ready for you guys. So I'm putting the tea water in there. And we're going to just put in one teapot's worth to start. It doesn't really matter how much you start with as long as it's enough to make the tea with. So it starts out like traditional iced tea. You have your hot water, and then really, as much as we are, Colette and I are health nuts, you're using traditional white sugar. Yes, people, white sugar. Don't use anything other than white sugar because in the end, you don't want, it, the, the sugar is what feeds the bacteria that creates the fermentation. So we have the SCOBY, or the mother, which is that jellyfish looking bacteria I showed you earlier. Um, so we're going to dissolve the sugar in there, and the SCOBY is what you end up putting in the tea later that feeds off of the white sugar. So I'm going to do a cup and a half of sugar for this size container, and we will post a recipe to follow so you have all the proportions you need later. You can just kick back, relax, and watch for now. So I put the hot water in, I, let, I pour the, the sugar in, and I just give it a stir with a wooden spoon and let it, you'll see, once the sugar is dissolved, it's completely clear, it looks like water again. It's kind of hard to tell in here just because it's um, 
foggy, but you'll see. It's just clear water now. The sugar is dissolved. And I am going to put in six tea bags. Um, again, the proportions are based on the, of the amount of water you're putting. So this is, I have four of an orange ginger that I like and two of a peach tea that I like. And I'm just going to let that brew. And then after it's done brewing, we're going to fill the rest of this up with just cold water, either purified water. Um, if you have filtered water, it's best to use something that's filtered or pure or spring water um, if you can. Uh, so we're going to put that aside for now. Let that cool. And typically kombucha is made with black tea and you can use green tea. Um, I like to use herbal teas because I prefer a decaffeinated drink and that way I can drink it at night and it doesn't affect my sleep. There you go. I'm That's very, a great idea. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. very uh, caffeine sensitive. So as you can see, I have little labels here of the types of tea that I use. So batch to batch, I remember what flavor I put in. This specifically is a black tea. I did have an orange, ginger, and peach in here earlier. So I, this specific container has 200 ounces of water, the black tea, and the sugar. And what we'll do now, once your tea is cool and you have it ready to go, it just needs to be room temperature, then you're going to take, oh, let's go with this one. You're just going to add a SCOBY. So every single time you brew kombucha, another SCOBY forms. And it's called a baby. So the main SCOBY is called the mother. So you'll probably hear about a mother uh, SCOBY. And you can get the mothers, believe it or not, on Amazon. So if you don't have anybody that you know that's already brewing kombucha, you can just go on Amazon. They're like $8. It comes in a mailing envelope. It's kind of weird that you can order something that's alive in Amazon, have it show up on your doorstep till you get home to take your mail in, but you can. It's a beautiful thing. So this is a SCOBY. It's a macrobiotic organism, bacteria, that oh, wow, look at that. peels apart. So this is the baby that formed with the last batch. And this, sorry if I'm a little off camera here, it looks like a pancake. It's you know, it's feel it's like a little jellyfish feeling. Oh yeah. And you put it right back in the pot. And it doesn't have to be pretty, it can lay on top, it doesn't have to. And just for good measure, sometimes I just throw a little of the the baby in there too. I'm gonna save this one for Colette. And you also wanna keep a cup of the kombucha to put back into the next batch. So this was from my last batch. Every time you brew, a new one is formed, and we call them the babies, and they go into mason jars into my fridge, and they call it a SCOBY hotel. So you end up with a, a, um, a whole bunch of them in your fridge, and you can share them with your friends. So now they're in here, and they're gonna ferment this tea um, for uh, anywhere from seven to 30 days. I can tell when the kombucha's ready, you can smell after you've brewed, I've been brewing for about four years. So you can smell, it almost starts to smell almost vinegary-like. Even though it doesn't really taste that vinegary, it smells um, along that line. And so I can tell when it's ready. But that's why I recommend you guys get the container with the spout because then you can take a little glass underneath, pour a little taste, sip it, and see if, it's, if you feel like it's ready because I typically brew no less than two weeks, and you'll see this SCOBY forming all along the top again. So if you want to really be sure that it's a new SCOBY, you can just shove this guy down. You can sink. It doesn't have to be at the top. And then along the surface, a whole new one will form. And once the new one forms, it's ready to go. It's just a matter of how sweet or tart you want it to be. So the, less, the shorter the time you ferment, it'll be a little bit sweeter. Um, and it's going to eat up all that sugar that we put in there. So when you're ingesting the tea, it's a very low sugar content. Of course, there could be some in there. I don't have a good way to measure sugar content, um, but not a lot of, I've, I've asked actual kombu kombucha breweries and they don't um, have a good answer for me yet. So, uh, <laughs> but you can test the pH and check the balance of the pH versus the um, acidity of it. And um, you want to put it back in, cover it with a cloth on the top. So I use this just old cloth napkin and a rubber band, got here. 
and then you put this in a dark place that is somewhere between 68 and 78 degrees. The warmer it is, the faster it will brew, and um, and you don't want it to really don't want it to go above 85 or below probably 68 too low because I have in the past put kombucha in my basement to brew and it got so cold in the winter that the, everything got moldy and I had to throw it out and it's very sad when you've spent all this time creating yeah. the scobies and the babies. So I have some here. I'm going to take a little drink. It's so good. And now I'm going to show you how I harvest it once it's done. So this was the one that I showed you in the beginning, my, my mad science project. And we're just going to, this is my SCOBY Hotel's growing. So that's there. And now, um, oh, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Let's pour some of this back in here. And so we have enough fluid for this guy. Now this one's gonna come out. And this is the one that just grew. This one's probably about three weeks old. Beautiful, actually a perfect example. See this perfectly round one, and then the baby. Wow, that's that really the best awesome. one I ever had. So here's the baby that formed. Ooh, I can't, I gotta make sure I can show you. And this is the one I just pulled out. Get a little better view here. Looks like a pancake. It's a perfect circle. I'm very proud of that one. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put that one in there, and then Colette will have some nice ones for her kombucha that she's going to make. So once you have it finished, I'll move these guys over here. I take, it, I take this glass pitcher just because it's much easier. It's an eight-cup pitcher. holds a couple of liters. Um, and I put a strainer in it just so to strain out, there are sometimes a little couple floaters in oh, there that, um, thank you, You're welcome. that, you know, if you, I don't know if you can get a good look at that in there, or in the, but you can see there's like some, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of floaties um, from the SCOBY. And again, it's not an issue to digest that. It's perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt you. Um, and so we're just going to pour this into here. Now this kombucha jar. I have, I use 200 ounces of water and that amounts to seven mason jars of kombucha in your fridge. And the beautiful thing is when it's really good and you know you've done it right, you can test it because it's carbonated. So you should be able to see the Swirling yeah, you can see the there. you can see the the uh, and carbonation. I just pour it, so I'll strain it and then I'll just pour it into jars. You can see. I don't know if you can tell on there, but you can see the bubbles. Oh yeah, nice bubbly. Yum. So, yes, and this one did not brew as long as the last one, so it's even a little bit sweeter, I'm guessing. And then I'm just going to put a lid on it, and this can go right into the fridge. Steve it that way, and once it goes in the fridge, it does not ferment any longer, so it just goes dormant. And again, like I mentioned earlier, with these little SCOBY hotels, you want to make sure that you have enough kombucha in there to cover up the SCOBY, and you can just put a, a cloth on it. You don't want to suffocate it while it's alive, so you put the cloth on it with a rubber band, stick it in the fridge, and then it will, um, it will no longer ferment, but you want to make sure if you've left it in your fridge for even over a month, you want to just put a little bit more kombucha in to refresh and give it some more of the, um, the the fresh kombucha to continue to feed off of a little bit. And then they can last for months. Okay, so I don't have these nice plastic yes. lids for my mason jars. Yes. I just have the regular metal ones. Is that yes. okay to use them when you put them in the refrigerator? Yes. So when you go to drink it, you can, and really, I feel this is fine because it is coated. This is not actually metal. So really, once this is on and sealed, it's not gonna hurt the kombucha. Awesome. And the, in, the nutrient benefits of the kombucha. Awesome. So we'll fill up another one for you here. And. Oh, is that my jar or is that your jar? I brought it for you. Oh, thank you. I'll yes. return the favor. I got some over there. Sounds good. <laughs> and um, let's just pour a little more in here. So we have. One. Brewing, 
one cooling and one ready. And then I want to show you some things you can do afterwards. So you really don't want to mess with the recipe of the kombucha to start out with. It's really tea bags, water, and sugar. And then when that's ready, you add the SCOBY. After the couple of weeks has passed, um, yes, sure. um, you want to, if you want to flavor it, um, if you want to flavor you your kombucha, you can add fruit to it, but I would not add a fruit before the fermenting. Let it ferment, do its thing on its own, and then um, you can add fruit. So you'll see here, I did, this was from the same batch. So this was the original kombucha, and then I added four raspberries into this, and it was full earlier, but I just brought a sample. Um, and then you just let that sit, again, outside of the um, fridge. So you want to let that continue to ferment for a little longer. And I put raspberries in this one, and you'll see that put it, oh, there's a little scoby that formed in there. Oh, wow. The raspberries drained their color, and you can see how, um, let's see if we can get a good look at that. There you go. You can see how pale they are, and That's you'll amazing. notice how pink this is. And if you want to try a little bit, you can taste the, uh, yeah. oh, you know, here, let's, Let's do a little of the raspberry kombucha tea. So this tea is the decaf version, the one that we flavored with the raspberries. Oh, it smells so good. Yes. Cheers. Mm. Oh, you'll see you can taste the raspberry. Oh, there. yeah, that's delicious. Yeah. You guys have to look, to get this recipe. In fact, Liz is going to do the recipe for us, and I'm going to put it on my on my website. So you just go to www.holistichappyliving.com, and um, it's going to be in the recipe section under drinks, smoothies, and shakes. So um, it's not there yet, but it will be within the next week. So uh, if you're not on my mailing list yet, please make sure you go there. Sign up for the man list so as soon as it hits the blog, you'll get notification of it. Great. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank this you for great. coming. This was so much fun. Yeah, thanks for everybody who came and watched. And feel free to post and comment and let us know what you think. If you have any questions, definitely post them. And either Colette or I can get back to you with the answers about kombucha brewing. Absolutely. And where can folks find you? You can find my business Facebook page is Liz Curran Health and Anxiety Coaching and my website is LizCurran.com and um, a little plug for another benefit of kombucha as you intake your kombucha and you're healing your digestion and you're healing your immune system and you're healing your body all of your inflammation calms and it allows your body to heal and it does help with your stress level. So for those of you, you looking for an anxiety cure, kombucha can help you too. Awesome. Thanks guys. Thanks so much for joining. See you next week on WTMK Live Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. See you Bye. next week.